Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sula Antonio, Executive Director of the American Heart Association, right here in the greater Washington region. I'm so thrilled to welcome you to the Community Conversation Series presented by our Healthy for Good sponsor, Kaiser Permanente. The three pillars of Healthy for Good are eat smart, move more, and be well. Last month, we dove into healthy eating. Next month, we'll be diving into mental wellness and its impact on heart disease and overall health. And today, we move on to the topic of movement with a discussion on how staying active is good for the mind as well as the body. In just a minute, we'll be hearing from Dr. Elizabeth Kramer, internal medicine physician and lifestyle medicine specialist, as well as Sebastian Cohen, doctor of physical therapy, as they chat with Emmy, award-winning news anchor and consumer investigative reporter for WUSA 9 TV, Larry Miller about how to make every single movement count. Following the panel, we'll be joined by the always energized Laurent, international fitness entertainer. I had the pleasure of joining Laurent at the stage on the Heart Walk last year. And let me tell you, you are in for a treat. Speaking of the Heart Walk, I want to say a big thank you to our 2022 Heart Walk co-chairs, Kaiser Permanentes, Cynthia Cifuentes and Dr. Omea Kulkarni and Kaiser Permanente's president, Ruth Williams Brinkley for their amazing support of the American Heart Association and our mission. And now without further ado, let's zip over to Larry to get us started. Larry, the floor is yours. All right, so thank you so much. And of course, to all of our friends that are joining us this evening, good evening to all of you. We're looking forward to a great discussion about how we can do and, and take small steps that are going to have a substantial impact on our health. Before we get started, I want to let you know, if you have questions at all during any point during our discussion, please drop them in the chat and we will do our best to get those answered for you. Uh, if you guys didn't know, today is also National Walking Day. What a perfect day to actually talk about about the small things that we can do that can have a substantial impact in our own lives. I know like some of you, I know myself, put on a, little, a couple of pounds uh, because of the pandemic, but like many of you, I wanna get back in shape, get back to a size I'm comfortable in and improve my heart health as well. So to do that, let's talk with our panel of experts that are joining us this evening for this discussion. Let's bring in our experts from Kaiser Permanente. Welcome Dr. Elizabeth Kramer and Sebastian Cohen. Good evening to you both. Good evening. All right, so let's start with our first question because uh, you know this often comes up a lot. We all know that exercise is important for our heart and our health. Uh, most of us could probably do a little bit more to kind of get more of it into our daily schedule why exactly is physical activity so important to our health, particularly our heart health? So physical activity has a lot of um, impact in general, we could say it does have an impact on the bad cholesterol, the LDL. It also has an impact on blood glucose. Um, it also increases our fitness overall. And with that, it can maintain our body weight. Um, and it also, um, aside from that, has an impact on, um, for example, bone health. In patients with osteoporosis, we in general, we do recommend weight bearing exercises. Um, it helps with balance um, in our senior citizens. So um, there are so many benefits. Um, these are just a couple and um, yeah. Sebastian, what say you? Uh, I mean, physiologically, everything Dr. Kramer said, I agree. Um, I, I think uh, there's also that, the, I think she would also say there's a wellness factor. Just you feel mm -hmm. good, you got endorphins in you. Great, nat best natural drug there is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, to add to that, actually, it helps with, you know, mental health and it can also help with um, sleep quality. Um, and we can all use a little bit more sleep these days, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so how much exercise do we need every day, every week, just to keep our bodies healthy? In general, um, the guidelines say, so we do recommend 150 minutes, uh, so two and a half hours per week um, of um, moderate exercise or 75 minutes of moderate to um, vigorous exercise per week. Um, 
So th those are the general guidelines. However, there was a recent um, um, paper published in the JAMA, um, uh, an article in, in JAMA that uh, said that even just an increase of 10 minutes um, per day would make a significant difference when it comes to mortality. So starting slow, something is better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. A small amount of time can do so much good in improving our health our wellness and our heart health and our mental health as well. Sebastian, we talked earlier about uh, overdoing it, right? When we kind of go a little bit too hard, too fast, we can suffer injuries as a result. And that's something that you see quite often. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of what, hap what ends up happening to me is I, I, I see all sorts of people jazzed up about how much they're gonna do, how they're gonna change their lives and they get out there maybe they take the vigorous part, you know, instead of going for the moderate, they go straight for the vigorous, right? And, uh, you know, all of a sudden they're, they come in limping to me. I, you know, I always remember my, my first job was actually at a, at a clinic that was inside a gold's gym. And we'd always get the guy, you know, the big guy walking in because he went for that 400 pound deadlift uh, maybe a little too soon. So I uh, got him, you know, blew out a disc. So I would say always starting slow is the most important. I think uh, stretching, most people don't want to stretch. I, I hate to be that guy that, that reinforces traditional wisdom, but, um, you know, which would have told you back in the day, stretch before, oftentimes, a lot of our more recent data would say that that makes you throw an injury, stretching afterwards once you've been warmed up. But definitely my biggest advice is always start slow. Start with something low impact. If you haven't exercised in a while, do less than you think you're capable of. So always yeah. start with a lot less. It's, it's interesting because I think people are, uh, when they get the bug to do things differently and improve their health, they just want to go for it, right? And of course, we all love the injury, uh, the energy that is, but we don't want to get the injury uh, that can certainly come with that. Uh, Sebastian, I want to get your thoughts on this. Dr. Kramer, your thoughts on this as well. We got this question from Rachel down in the chat. She says, I'm an avid runner, but I've heard walking has the same benefits compared to running. Is that true? Any feedback on that, guys? Dr. Kr I think Dr. Kramer let, uh, might be a great person to talk about some of the physiological yeah. Dr. Advantage. Kramer, any thoughts? Sure. So, you know, I think it all depends on where you um, where you're starting with. You know, if you are already a marathon runner or an avid runner, um, your physical fitness is, um, you know, a, a very, at a very different level than someone who is um, mostly sedentary and doesn't meet the physical activity guidelines. So, with that regard, um, walking does count as exercise and. Um, um, and certainly has its own benefits. If you come from an exercise level that's usually already at the vigorous um, you know, level and um, you then go back to a less vigorous level, um, there are so many things that play a role, the duration of the exercise, the intensity. So I wouldn't say that one or the other is better. Um, and, um, you know, there, there are many factors that play a role, what is better for one person than versus the other. Also, chronic conditions may play a role. So if someone has a heart condition um, or un other chronic diseases, running might not be good for them, whereas then walking really has a much better benefit or talking about weight bearing exercises per se. But um, Sebastian, did you have to... Um, add something there in terms of the fitness um, level. Yeah. yeah, I think something we forgot to mention is this definition of moderate versus vigorous has to do with heart rate. And I think that's an important thing to bear in mind. I've found that uh, I, I get a lot of people that are sometimes transitioning from being an avid runner to maybe having to do something a little bit lower. My tip, always, you know, heart rate is the top thing to look at. Quick tip, incline, walking on an incline, you would be surprised, right? So this is one of those things that's like an easy trick if you wanna to go to a lower. So one thing is if you're a walk around the neighborhood, I don't know about you guys, I got a great hill regimen around my neighborhood where I can do you know, a couple hundred feet of, of incline and decline, but it's as easy as just getting on the treadmill, maybe you used to run, try walking with, a, with even a five degree incline for 30 minutes, you will sweat and you will get what seems like a vigorous uh, exercise. Um, so I, I think there's always ways to remember that every one of these things is easy to modify, right? Let's say you're an avid runner, but you're looking for something more low impact. Trust me, a uphill walking on a treadmill will, will get you. It'll get you to the heart rate you need. 
You know, yes. Sebastian and Dr. Kramer, you guys brought up a really good point. Uh, you know, um, one of the things I, I shared with our panelists, and I certainly want to share with you guys at home, I used to run ultra marathons. I would frequently go on 50 mile runs. Uh, I completed a hundred mile race. And I remember when I took time off after running that ultra marathon that, you know, um, I certainly wasn't in the same shape that I had been in prior to that. And getting back into it, I wanted to go just as hard as I did when I was running the 100 mile race. And I got injured, I got depressed, I got sad. Uh, and so to your point, uh, Dr. Kramer and, and Sebastian there, that you do have to take it easy when you're trying to get back into it, give your body a chance uh, to get back into the swing of things because it's gonna do you a lot of good when you think about trying to get your body uh, back into shape. I wanna get to one other question from Charlene and guys, thank you so much. Uh, Rachel, for that question, Charlene posted her question down here in the chat as well, saying, what is the best exercise for losing belly fat? I have read every belly book with no results. That's a great question. Um, in general, for weight loss, while exercise is important when we talk about, you know, the input and output when it comes to energy, um, we do say that exercise in general is not um, the driving factor of weight loss. That truly is nutrition. However, if combined with exercise, you know, there are different ways of exercise um, to, to look at. And I'm sure Sebastian uh, can say something with that regard as well. So cardio exercise, you know, does help with the input and output when it comes to um, energy. Um, so that is always something that um, should be part of the exercises um, when one would like to uh, lose weight. However, when it comes to specific zones of the body, right, I think there are other exercises, um, for example, you know, um, the, the core exercises, and I'm sure that Sebastian has um, other comments with regards to that, that um, one can add to specific work on one area yeah so um i've looked through the and believe it uh, there's actually a decent amount of research i wish i could tell you there was an easy fix as a pt i'm so so you always have to remember there's a couple layers to the the core as a pt i'm i'm usually looking at injury prevention i'm going to the deepest level so I'm, at, I'm, I'm thinking about transverse abdominis. I'm thinking about pelvic floor muscles i'm thinking about that first layer that's below the six pack. Most people usually want their obliques. They want that six pack. That's what they're usually thinking about. Fair enough. Yes, absolutely. Um, and a lot of times what I'll find is that, uh, if that, you know, I'll, I'll always say, think of yourself as an egg you're trying to hard boil. Since we're talking about injury prevention, it's a long haul to get you to that physique that you'd like. Start from deep to out, and so that deep, from deep to uh, to superficial. So, generally, the way to think about core, anytime you you see an exercise where it doesn't seem like any anything's moving, that's your deep core. Whenever you know, so if you think about planks, if you think about any any time where you're doing, uh, you know, if you've ever seen people do Pilates, when this the the base that your trunk is not moving and everything else is moving, those are your stabilizers. Once you start getting towards wanting to build up obliques, build up kind of more superficial, nicer looking uh, abs, then you're starting to look at more movement. You're looking at, you've probably seen people do these, you know, bicycle twists, you're looking at sit-ups. My only advice, and again, I'm the physical therapist, I'm, gonna, I'm always gonna have a little different perspective uh, than, than people get to work with with uh, people that are not injured. My, my advice is always start slow, start low, start with the core exercises where it looks like nothing's moving and you'll be, you'll be safe, you'll, you'll, have a, you'll be safe that you're building up the stability you need to prevent injury as you go further on. In general, if I may um, also say something here, it's always important to set goals. We call them smart goals. So they have to be, um, you know, realistic. They have to be um, in a timely manner set. So if we say, okay, next week we want to run a marathon, that would be a bad goal. Um, it's not realistic. And um, so setting small steps um, that are attainable and realistic in a timely manner. So saying, where do I want to be in three months? Where do I want to be in a year? That can help and it can also prevent frustration. That's some great advice there. You know, I, I've certainly been there where, you know, I put on a couple extra pounds and by next week I need to be uh, 40 pounds less. But 
doesn't work that way, no matter how much we manifest, right? We got to do the work. Uh, some great questions there. So Charlene, I hope we answer that question for you, love. Uh, let's go to another question. This is really about that time management component. What's your best advice to make more time for physical activity and to prioritize that physical activity during our day? That's also a fantastic question. I love this one. So, you know, there are a lot of possibilities hidden in our daily life. So do we really have to take that elevator, right? Where are the stairs in my office building? Often the stairs are hidden, but they're actually close by. So, you know, and if you work like I do on the fifth floor and that's not realistic on the first day, you could just walk up to the second floor and then maybe the next week you walk up to the third floor and then you take the elevator. Um, you could park a little further away to then, you know, get the extra steps in that you otherwise wouldn't. Um, vacuuming at home, gardening, all those things, they do count as physical activity. Speaking of the difference, vigorous here and um, moderate, we say something's vigorous activity when you can't sing or talk while um, performing, you know, that particular exercise or activity. And um, you could also, when you sit at your desk, you know, um, get a standing desk and stand instead of sitting um, all day, or, you know, some people have these little, um, um, uh, pedals underneath their desk where they, they just, you know, keep moving instead of uh, sitting still. Yeah, I, I agree with everything. The only thing I, I usually add um, is, and I've talked about this with Betty a lot, I have a challenge that I give a lot of my patients. I call it the 100 sit to stand challenge. So for a lot of us, we're sitting at a desk all day. And uh, it's not realistic to tell yourself that you're going to go out and go to the gym and get a bunch of squats in. But it's not too hard to pop a reminder on your phone. And uh, five times a day, just, you know, if you want to make it sound sexy, I call it the functional squat. But uh, it's, it's a very, you know, in general, I find it's a very advantageous movement, making sure you've got that good hip hinge, knees aren't going too far forward. Um, that's really, that, that hip hinge is, the, is a really good component for functional movement, because a lot of times what I find is there's a lot of drive towards cardio walking and, and, and this is very functional. And then what people end up forgetting is that a lot of our life is spent, and this is a big source of injury for physical therapists, level changes, getting, re reaching down to pick something off the ground. So something as simple as just that practice of getting up in and out, up and out of your chair, really paying attention that you're, you're hinging at your hip, you're squeezing with your glutes, that can build in a pattern. So next time you go to drop a pen on the floor and you go to reach it, you don't come up with a, with a slip disc or with some kind of back strain. So that's my first step. The only other thing I would add is uh, if you can be an early riser, the morning is your friend. There's nothing like getting stuff done first thing in the day because I don't know about you all. I get home to uh, after a day of work, screaming kids, a bunch of stuff to guy, I got to do. It's hard to make the time. But if you get up early first thing in the morning, you know, that early bird gets the worm. Yes, sometimes there are a couple of other tricks too. So you could find an accountability partner, you know, from work or a friend or your, your spouse where you just say, have you done your squats today? Have you done your, you know, particular exercise that you want? Or you can plan ahead. If you do have a gym membership, which is not necessary, of course, um, to do these little squeezed in exercises, but have it ready at the door so that when you have an idea of going to the gym that you don't have to find your sneakers and you know all the equipment first because while doing so that barrier might build up and um, so those are little other tricks to just facilitate exercise. Great. Thank you so much. That was awesome. We have one more minute before we need to get to the next part of our program. And I want to ask one question. Uh, for those of you that have put questions in the chat, we're going to do another Q&A at the back end of our program. So I didn't forget about you. All love, I promise. But I want to get to this final question before we move on. And, and it deals specifically with low impact exercises. If you could suggest some that actually might be helpful. And to a question that we got in the chat, that one from Paul read asking whether or not uh, swimming would actually be a good cardio exercise as well. I mean, I, I'd say yes. I'd say yes to it all. Um, uh, any movement is movement is medicine. Movement is good. And certainly, you know, like I said, that one of the big things I always try to mention to people is, is the incline, because again, in, when it comes to low impact, finding the way to, he's asking the right question. A lot of times we have a difficulty finding the way to be efficient with low impact. I personally love cycling for myself to get to kind of where I need to go with all the other things I got going around. 
it, cycling is just not the most efficient way for me to get to the level of vigorousness that I need. So that's, that really comes back to the question of moderate, vigorous, like Dr. Kramer was saying, knowing what level you're at and, uh, you know, always knowing that whether you want to push a little bit further forward. So I'd say swimming is great. Walking uphill is great. If you want to run and you're good at it, you can do a hundred miles, Larry. Hey, I I'm jealous. Yes. And for the sustainability of it, one important thing, do something you like. So if it's something where you feel like you have to beat yourself every day to get to it, that's probably not a good sign, um, you know, and it's probably not going to be something that's sustainable in the long run. So um, decreasing that barrier um, as much as possible. And if you like swimming, go for it. And there's another benefit to it. So for patients who have joint pain, for example, the water has an extra benefit um, and um, you might be able to move better than, um, for example, um, when you run. Great advice there. Thank you so much uh, to all of our friends uh, that are standing by and participating in our program. Let's give some digital snaps here for Dr. Elizabeth Kramer and Sebastian Cohen from Kaiser Permanente. Thank you to you both. Uh, this is no doubt some incredible insight from the both of them about what we can all do uh, to take those small steps that are going to go a long way in improving our health. And with that, if we're going to talk the talk, we got to walk the walk, so to speak. So let's bring in now our amazing fitness guru, Laurent Amelazog, who's gonna be giving us a demonstration right now. Hey, oh Laurent. my God, it is such a pleasure. Larry, thank you so much for the nice intro. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a few different exercises that you could do anywhere. You don't need any equipment, all right? All you need is a big smile on your face, and I'm sure you already have it, but I want everybody to join me, all right? The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a few stretches. Like Sebastian said, one of my favorites is called the good morning. Take a deep breath. Bring those arms all the way up and then exhale. Do that again. I love deep breathing exercises. First of all, that lowers your stress levels and it just feels good. Take a deep breath. Let's do that a couple hundred more times. I'm just kidding. Let's do that one more time. And exhale. Now, I want to do something called the wiper. So you're going to bring your arms up all the way up. And you're going to tilt the body to the side. Hold it there for two seconds. One, two, bring it back to the original position. And let's do that again. You know, this is, these are great stretches that you could do sitting down. You're at your desk. All those muscles really get tight. This is a great way just to kind of open it up. And all you got to do is a few per side and you got it done. Let's do that one more time. Oh, that feels good on the, on the whole oblique area right here. And now let's do that one more time. You can take that deep breath again. And exhale. All right, so now we're all limbered up. What I want to do today, since we're fighting heart disease, I want to do some cardio exercises. So what we're going to do is I got my, my little time over here. We're going to do 30 second drills. Okay, we've got a few minutes. We're going to do 30 seconds drills. The first drill that I want to do is called a two jab to one to one jab on the left, hook and hook. Okay, one, two, one, one, one. You could also do that. Sitting down, one, two, one, one, one. 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Everybody, come on. One, two, pop, pop, pop. Go crazy, okay? Don't hit anything. Be careful. Don't hit a lance or your dog or whatever is in front of you. But this is just to get in shape. Good. I mean, this is just a small movement, but it's incredible how it's going to get your cardio. We got 15 seconds left. Pop, pop. Let's fight. Let's go. Heart disease. One, two, one. One, one. Let's do now the other side. One, two, one, 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 two with the left, one with the right. Pop, pop. We got two seconds and boom, perfect. Nice. All right. So the next one that I want to do is a speed back. Okay. This is how it looks like from the side. Be careful not to hit your face. Okay. Because you could hurt yourself. 30 seconds again. We're in a, you could do it in a semi squat position or sitting down. Just those kind of things. Three, two, one. Go for it. Let's go. Nice. What you could also do is a squat, like Sebastian said, squats at your desk, and you now you're adding an element of upper body, getting your shoulders, getting the cardio going, getting the oxygen, you're getting your legs and glutes when you're doing this, you're getting the big muscles, you're getting your metabolism going. I'm talking too much, I know. Let's go, we have eight seconds. Beautiful, just like that. Nice. If your heart rate is not going, that means you're dead already. <laughs> Let's go, keep it going. Nice. Three. Two, one, 
and time. Beautiful. All right, so what we're going to do now is a volleyball drill. I love volleyball. I grew up playing volleyball. I was in my school team. So volleyball, you got one hand inside the other, and then you shoot the ball. One, two, one. You could add the squat if you want, or again, you could do it sitting down. Are you ready? Three, two, one, 30 seconds. Go. One, two. I'm doing it the one standing up, or you could do it sitting down. Nice. Keep those arms straight. So now we're going to get the whole upper body, some shoulders going up. Nice. Go for it. Good. Almost there. We have 10 seconds left. Come on. It's amazing. It's a small movement, but it really gets the entire body. Tighten up your core at the same time. Imagine somebody's about to punch you. That's how I want your core to be tight. Good. Now we're involving every muscle in the body. In three, two, one, and Time, beautiful. I don't know if we have 30 more seconds. Do we have 30 more seconds, Larry? Tell me we do because I want we to- We got it, buddy. Go for it, go for it, go for it. All right, all right. So we're going to do an NBA challenge, a three-pointer challenge. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go one, that's one point. Two, so you're going to do a three-pointer. I want you to count how many you could do in 30 seconds, and then I want you to write it down in the chat box. We'll see who wins. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go for it. How many three-pointers could you do? You could also do them sitting down, just like that. Pow. Pow. Come on, three pointers. If you're doing it with a squat, now we're getting a lot more muscles. Again, you want those knees to be behind the toes, just like that. Protect your knees. Come on, we have 10 seconds left. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Keep it going. And I want you to write your results in the chat box at the end. We have two, one, time. Put your results in the chat box. Who won today's challenge? Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. That's all it takes. Just Ooh. add a little fitness during your day. Laurent, excellent job there. Let me tell you, buddy, the energy, level 10,000. And so, <laughs> many, <laughs> so many results coming in right now. Kimberly Jackson, 31. Jane Edwards, 19. Wow. Uh, this is awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Kramer will bring you back. Sebastian Cole will bring you back as well. We want to give all three of you an opportunity to kind of give us some final thoughts. We've had an opportunity to ask some important questions, um, and we've also had an opportunity to have an amazing demonstration from Laurent. Uh, certainly, we all want to get to that level too, but there's some things that we should consider. So I just want to get, um, we'll, Sebastian, we'll get your thought, and then I'll get a question uh, answered. Uh, before we go and then i'll continue to go down that way so sebastian we'll start with you since you're first on my screen i, I like all this stuff i'm i'm a i'm a movement nerd i think like laurent probably is um my advice usually to people is stick with stick with a guy like laurent then you won't have to see me <laughs> make sure a guy who's making sure that he's keeping you loose all right good stuff from sebastian there let's get to one uh, another question before we have to say uh goodbye goodbye to everybody this one coming from kimberly she says what is the best way for beginners to build muscle what do you think is that best way for beginners to build muscle we'll start with anyone on the panel here well i mean you know in my opinion i think body weight exercises is a great way to start, right? What do I mean by body weight exercises? I mean push-ups, I mean sit-ups, I mean like squats again, or lunges where you don't use any weights or machines, you just use your own body weight. You just listen to your body, just see how far you could take your body. Once you get stronger, then you can start using bands or free weights to get, take it to the next level. To me, I think, you know, starting with just Body weight exercises is one of the best ways to really increase muscle mass safely. I couldn't agree more. You get that good form, but you, you want to make sure your form is good before you start putting weight into the system. You start putting weight into the system with bad form. You're like my, uh, you're like my, my deadlifter. Uh, you're like my deadlifter limping into the clinic to see me. You know, so make sure your form's clean. And the best way to do that: train clean, calisthenics. I'm with Laurent all the way. Absolutely. And to get that um, in, you know, aerobic exercises are really important and uh, for heart health, particularly, right, they get that pump going. So uh, different exercises have different goals. And I think um, having a variability of different exercises there is, is really the key. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Kramer, we'll get your final thoughts as well, since we're talking. Sure, I think, you know, go ahead, go out there, every little step count, 
counts and um, try to decrease that barrier that prevents you from exercising, from making that extra move um, as much as possible. And take the stairs next time if you can. All right, and we'll get to our final questions before we say goodbye. I'm going to combine two of them together. Uh, one from Morgan, the other one from Paul Letra. Uh, really talking about HIIT workouts. Are these safe to do and how much is too much? Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if it's okay if I can answer. You know, a HIIT workout is really a more intense workout. I would, I would say like, you know, no more than two times a week. Or, or maybe three times a week if you're going to do HIIT workouts because your body really needs to recover between those HIIT workouts. You know, they're really intense. Some of them are like you go on for 20 seconds as hard as you can. You take a little breather for 10 seconds, back and forth. You do many different kind of variations. So it's really, really intense. So your body does need a recovery period. And, and I think that's one of the mistakes that people do is they try to do a lot of those in a row and that's where injuries come in. So if you are going to go in the hit path, if you're gonna do hit workouts, I say you do like maybe two or maybe three a week, and you can mix that up with maybe lower intense uh, exercises. Now, this a, a hit when you think about a hit workout, I think this is something you build up to, right? You don't go from zero to a hundred right away. I think you start off like you know getting your body prepped up before you can start doing those hit workouts because these are really challenging. These are really demanding on your body, on your joints. And if you are not trained yet in a way, that, that, could, that could make you more prone to different, uh, different injuries. So I would start nice and easy. I would build myself and then I could start doing those hit workouts, but make sure that you give yourself the break you need during the week to recover so you, you could avoid injuries. Yeah, only thing I would add is uh, the remember one of the reasons we see this hit being a big source of injury is if your form's not right in the first place, and now you're trying to do as many reps as you can under the clock, you're you're going to find yourself in a bad place. So a lot of times, the value of the hit is that you can get these functional movements like Loretta is talking about, squats, lunges. These are great. These are great functionally. If something drops on the floor, you want to be ready to get it. Daily life. But it, but it's good to make sure that you have the time to start slow, make sure your movement pattern is correct. This is kind of a basic exercise physiology thing. We see actual muscle hypertrophy that's actually getting the muscles bigger takes six to eight weeks. But anybody who's ever worked out knows, wow, I'm getting better in the first week or two. So that's just neuro, that's neuromuscular education. That's your body learning the task, learning the dynamics of the task, getting into the right position, finding those right kind of movement channels, Really focus on getting your form right. And when you when you know a movement down pat and you're not worried about messing it up, that might be the time you could think about adding that movement to a hit protocol. A lot of great information from all of our panelists. Muriel Cooper inspired, writing in the chat that she's inspired to do a 30-minute dance class. So Muriel, let us know how that goes, and we're excited to see uh, you kind of get back in action there. If you enjoyed yourself tonight, please drop us a smiley face down in the chat. Let our, our panelists know how much you appreciate them. Laurent, we're going to give you the last word uh, before we say goodbye, sir. So uh, when it comes to, to exercise, when somebody comes to me and says, Laura, what should I do? For me, start small. Start with little changes. Add one little thing to your life, whether it's just going for a walk, whether it's just one exercise a day. You know why? Because that's going to snowball into bigger changes. You're going to feel good right away. You start moving, you're going to feel good. You feel good, you want to do other changes. Maybe you start changing your diet. Maybe you start like waking up, like, you know, working on your sleep. Maybe you start drinking less alcohol. It's one thing will lead to another. So my whole philosophy is start with something small, start with something that you enjoy, because when you enjoy something, you stick with it. And when you stick with it, then you get the results you're looking for. That's my message. To all of our panelists, thank you so much, folks. That's gonna do it for us tonight. Again, a huge thank you to Kaiser Permanente for your support of the American Heart Association, Greater Washington Region. That final conversation in this series is gonna take place on May the 18th. At 12.15 in the afternoon, we're going to focus on mental well-being and the impact of that on your heart health. So mark your calendars and make sure you join us because we certainly want you here. We certainly want to do this together and keep an eye out on the local AHA social media pages for more information on our next discussion. Thank you so much for your time today and we will see you later.